Hey there, happy Wednesday. Tonight we are going to be embroidering some of our itty bitty holiday icons. Uh, so I have uh, three different things I want to work on with these and I'll talk about that soon. So thanks for joining me here tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish where we make cute embroidery kits for the beginning crafter. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, live here on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, and it's a time that we can relax and craft together. So I'm here for about an hour, and I work on projects from beginning to end, so you can be part of the whole process along the way and just have some fun craft time during the week. So thanks again for joining me. We are working on the embroidery of the month. This is a, you, this is a week early or a few days earlier than we normally work on this. But it's the holidays, so I thought we'd get some extra stitching in. Uh, we have the snowy pattern and also the merry pattern are the embroideries of the month for, for this month. And it's a bunch of little icons, and I have my stick and stitch from the bundle. I have this ready, and I'm going to just cut out some of these little icons, and we're going to make a few little small projects out of it. So tonight, I think I want to start, I'll give you kind of an overview of what I'm thinking we'll make. And I want to start a Christmas ornament uh, with the, you know, that can hang in the little embroidery hoop. So I think that'll be our first project. We will be working on this uh, today through the end of the week, and then also next week uh, we'll be doing this embroidery of the month. So uh, thanks for joining me. There are bundles still available at penguinandfish.com and also uh, the digital uh, patterns as well. So, all right, let's get going. Hello, hello. All right, let's get cracking here. I'm just going to scroll through your comments. Thank you again for joining me here tonight. So nice to see everyone. All right, so here are the patterns, and you can see I have a few other things out here. We're going to get low here tonight again as well, because we are going to be stitching. So, all right. Here is the Mary pattern and all the little icons on there. So this is definitely more of a, a Christmas related um, pattern. And then here is just kind of general winter holiday uh, a pattern as well. So we have both of those as bundles. Uh, you can stitch them just like this and I think they look really fun like this. You could frame them in a frame uh, I did them um, so they'd fit in like a 5 by 7 frame really nicely. Uh, so you can stitch them all at once. However, I think I am going to cut them up. Like I'm going to cut out the little icons here and there and use them in a bunch of projects. And uh, uh, this is that stick and stitch uh, material where I've printed on it. And it comes off like a sticker. And you can... Uh, stick them onto your fabric and you stitch right through this and then it comes off with water. So this is sticky right here. So we're basically going to make a bunch of stickers this size that we can stitch through. So the first thing that I want to start out making is just an ornament uh, in our embroidery hoop. So this is our four inch embroidery hoop and uh, I want to just put it in some fabric like so. And I thought we could do like maybe one icon or maybe a couple icons and maybe just say, you know, 2020 on it. So like, or Merry 2020 or, you know, Snowy 2020, which it is of neither. <laughs> I mean, is this really a merry, merry year? I don't know. And then it's not very snowy yet either by us, <laughs> which is kind of funny. But yeah, so we could just write something. I definitely want to put 2020 in because this will be like, this will be my 2020 ornament and a cute little icon. And I also want to wrap the hoop. So I'll show you how I do that. That's just going to be kind of decorative. I might actually match it to here, uh, but a fun thing you can do to decorate your embroidery hoop. So that's going to be our first project. We have to pick what icon to do, what, um, what little widget to do. Uh, the next thing I'd love to do is make some gift tags. So for that, I think I'm going to just pick one or a couple 
guys, and we'll we'll stitch it onto this fabric again, but we'll leave like a little space uh, next to it, so like a little rectangle. Maybe it comes to a point, or maybe it's round. Maybe the whole thing's round. I don't know. We'll play around with it. But I'd like to stitch it on the muslin. But then I thought we could sew it with the sewing machine onto like some nice wool. So I got these wool blankets um, from this basically blanket wool factory near us here. Uh, Fairbow, uh, Fairbow uh, Woolen Mills. And I thought we could sew it onto here with the sewing machine, have a little bit of a border, and then the back would be all, all that. I thought that would be awfully pretty. So I kind of want to experiment with that. So we'll do that second. And then we talked about this last night. Uh, I'd love to stitch uh, some of these guys on a, on a shirt. And this seemed just right. I don't wear this shirt very often. Um, but I think with some stitching, I would a little bit more. And I think I know just the icons to do it. I think I'm going to put the cardinal and the black cap chickadee on, on either lapel. So like the cardinal over here and the chickadee over here or on, on the collar. And I think that would be just so cute. Just tucked in the corner here. Another fun way to just use, use these icons. So I think I'm going to reserve those two. I'll, I'll even cut them up right now and um, we can stick them on. But I'm pretty excited about that. <laughs> then maybe I can start wearing this sweater again and uh, wear it um, without having it to be Christmas because these little birds I could wear whenever. But I think I'm most likely to wear this shirt like underneath a sweater or something in Christmas where, or like in winter here where the, um, the collar would just be poking out. So I'm going to prep this, but then we'll, we'll get back to the ornament. I just know for sure that I want these birds here. So before I forget, oh gosh, they look cute. Just cut down so little like this. So you could trace it on if you wanted to, but I think this stick and stitch is going to just work really well for this. Oh, no, it's not. So uh, Lisa's asking if the craft kit that we mailed out, um, so that's that kitty kitty bag, that knitting kitty bag. That's We only have it as that drawstring bag right now. So, yeah, maybe we'll make that into a kit later or something. But no, I don't, I don't have that as a PDF. I'm just kind of trying to... I mean, I can move this around. This sticker is movable, but I think, I don't know, right there looks awfully cute. <laughs> These are so silly. Oh, this is going to be cute. All right, let's get this one. So I want them to sort of be upright and even, even though one one's a little bit bigger. One bird's bigger than the other. Oh my god, this is going to be the cutest freaking thing ever. Look, it's already cute. <laughs> okay, I'm really, really excited about this. So, all right. Um... We will set that to, to the side, but I got them reserved. So we'll do this either later this week or probably more likely um, next week. Well, this is going to be fun. I will definitely uh, I will definitely try this shirt on when we're done just so you guys can see what it looks like with the little guys on. Ooh, it's going to be cute too because I'll do the cardinal in like the red. That'll be nice on the green here. And then this little feller I think will be just cute. That black will pop. Ugh. All right. I'm excited. All right. So that's the shirt. I think, again, I think this is going to revitalize this shirt for me um, and make it a usable, wearable shirt again. Cute. All right. That's to the side. So tonight, let's make a uh, um, an ornament. Or let's at least get started. So first off, I'm just using scraps that I have 
Uh, you can definitely use the fabric that came with with the project. I'm going to just cut myself a square here, just really roughly. And I'm going to give it a little press too. This is just some scrap fabric I have laying around. I'll use that during the week here. All right, I'm just prepping my area before deciding on what icons and, and what we should do for this. I do have a piece of paper here if we wanted to try and figure out if we want some text on it. It's a little crinkle in this fabric, but I'm going to use it anyway. All right. So let's take a look at things here. So now, if this is a Christmas ornament, I think, why don't we just go with the blatant Christmas stuff? Um, so, you know, I'm kind of liking that, um, that stocking. Let's just cut them out. Let's play around a little bit. So let's, let's just see what we got. I kind of like this Rudolph too. So I'm going to just cut out a few that are popping out at me. Maybe we'll, maybe this will be like a trio, a trio of items. And then we can just say, what should we say it on, on it? Just like, I think just like 2020 or something. <laughs> it's going to be so cute. All right, let's do the stocking I liked. Maybe the wreath. So the wreath was kind of a more in-depth depth one. We could could do that. And then we'll pick, you know, from the rest of these for gift tags or something. Let's see. Maybe the Rudolph is kind of goofy in there. Rudolph and stocking. Oh, funny. Lisa says the Rudolph and stocking jumped out um, for her. And that's that's kind of right away what jumped out for me, too. So the wreath, the reason I'm putting the wreath here is that the, the way that I stitched the wreath was kind of in depth. Uh, so it does feel pretty hefty, whereas these in the way that I that they were stitched here feel a little bit more open and lighter so I thought maybe we'd do that hefty dense one in the middle and then it can be surrounded by these kind of lighter ones and you know we could fill in these shapes too we can stitch these however we want um, and maybe we'll play around with that a little bit tomorrow but all right I think that's kind of cute just like that uh, I would like to say like I said 2020 on here somewhere so how I like approaching text is by writing it on a piece of paper first. <laughs> uh, I think I can see through this fabric fine. I don't think I need a light table, but right now I'm thinking, you know, 20, 20, you know, just, just practice writing. You know, maybe it's some tall text. Just see kind of what you like. And then we can see what it looks like underneath and adjust. You know, maybe it's small. Ooh, smaller would be a little bit harder to stitch, but we can at least kind of check it out. Maybe we can flourish it a little bit more. I, I, I'm not great at all those calligraphy flourishes or something. But let's just see what that's looking like. So I'm going to just slide it underneath here. And right away, that's looking pretty cute already. I kind of actually like the tall version. I'm going to get a little bit lower so you guys can see. All right. Do you see uh, the text through there a little bit? This is a great way to test it. And, you know, if you have a bright window, 
you can hang this up on the window. So I think that's too wide. I kind of like this tall text. Maybe it needs like a little dot on each side. Let's let's do that. We can do like a little French knot here and a little French knot here. Oh, that would be really sweet. Uh, Shirley's saying it would be cute to put the bow at the top and then put ornaments like coming with lines like they're hanging from the bow. That's really cute. So that might, maybe we do something like that for um, one of our gift tags tomorrow. Yeah, the bow with like the little ornament hanging from it or, or this guy, this tall ornament. That would be awfully cute. Yeah, there's so many options and that's what I like about this. Okay, I'm kind of liking this. I like just this 2020. Should I, I mean like, 2020 is fine. I don't need to say anything else, do I? What about 2020 going, oh, vertical under the wreath. That might be kind of nice. And I'm just thinking about it. I think I might look, I don't know, kind of like a cross a little bit. I think I kind of like this. What if they're all in line? Oh, look at this. Okay. This almost looks like it says joy, doesn't it? <laughs> All right, we're, we're doing it like this now because I think it, doesn't it look like it says joy just about? Like it's subtle, but like that, the stocking is like a J. This is like a O, the wreath. And then this is sort of like a Y. I think it's enough that I'm kind of digging it. Let's pretend it says joy 2020. All right, I'm pretty excited about that. Let's do that. <laughs> For funny. Okay, that was a neat discovery. So what I'm going to do is let's write our 2020. So I'm going to just move this for now because we can we can move around our pieces here. I'm using just a water soluble marker. You could really just use a pencil. That would work fine as well. I'm going to just try and draw this 2020. Feel free to Google, you know, text just to like see if it looks cute so in my drawing i think this two is too far away from the zero so i'm just going to scooch my fabric towards that zero you can adjust that as you as you trace but yeah i mean if i looked up like some fancy ways to draw two i think we could have gotten some cute stuff here so with embroidery, you probably don't want to make your text if you're doing text too small because it's a little tougher to embroider then. The twos look a little bit different, but that's okay. It's kind of fun. Looks hand done still then. All right, and zero. All right, and then let's just... My dots aren't really lined up. Let's let's draw our own dots. I think the dots just added just a little extra little bit. We'll just do a little French knot on each of those. Okay, that's so fun. That that turned out to be joy. And if it doesn't seem like that, like if it doesn't look like it says that, that's fine too. I still like these three icons. So, all right, I, I'm going to start with the... Um, wreath just to kind of center it. That's like our most center thing. So I'm going to just try and center that above the 2020. And we'll use that as our guide from here on out. Okay, that's a good height. I think we can frame it nicely in here. Ooh, this is fun. I love these as these little itty bitty stickers. And I can move these around, like I can, if I don't like the placement of them. Yeah, I don't know how I want to place this one. If they're like letters, I almost want it to be lower like that. So, I don't know, we'll stick it there for now. I can lift it up. You don't want to be lifting it up and putting it down too much though, because you'll lose some of the stick on the back. But, you know, we're going to be stitching these pretty quick, so... I think we'll, we'll be okay. Uh, let's see what that looks like there. 
Do they look spaced well enough? Are they too far away from each other? I think it's looking pretty decent. I think I'm gonna go with that. But feel free to like pick them up and move them. I think, I think they're okay. I think they're fine. All right, let's get in the hoop. So if I'm not perfectly centered in the hoop right now, that's fine. I can, when we're done stitching, I'll move the hoop and we'll, we'll place it exactly where we want, we want it to be. So don't worry about it not being perfect at this point. We just want to get it in the hoop. All right, I, I think this is just going to be so adorable. Okay, you'd move the reindeer up a tad. Oh yeah, I think you're right. Now that I'm looking on it, like straight on. Yeah, we can adjust a little bit now. I kind of think they should be, all be a little closer too. Like I'm gonna move this guy a little bit closer. Maybe like right there maybe. I kind of, it almost looks like it all needs to move over a little bit, doesn't it? I don't think it's centered underneath that the 2020. <laughs> All right, we're going to just get real picky here. I am going to scooch. I think I can, well, no. Nah. I'm going to scooch this guy over. I got to look at it a little bit straighter on. Move this guy. Maybe it's a little weird that they're so close, but I think it's all right. There, how does that look? I think that, that reads kind of as joy or just three cute little icons. I think we're gonna go with that. Oh, thanks, Valeria. I appreciate it and I hope you feel better um, again here soon. And let me know if I'm not pronouncing your name right. I I had a a thought the other day that I'm like, oh, I wonder if it's like Valeria or <laughs> if it's Valeria. So I, I don't know. Let me know if I'm close. <laughs> I'll try and get it right. And same goes for anybody. If I'm saying your name super weird, just try and um, put in a comment and I'll do my best to remember. All right. I think we're good here. Um, let's, oh, speaking of needle minders, let's get, uh, mine from Marie out here. I mean, we are in a little space, so I, I think I'll probably just keep it, maybe I won't even keep it on. Maybe I'll just keep it nearby and I can set the needle on there and it'll just be a reminder that that's where I put the needle. <sighs> Look at our little guys with stuff cut out of it. It's kind of sad, but it's exciting. I like using them individually like this. All right. So we could do this. We could stitch this however we want. Um, we, you know, I think, I think for tonight I'll do it how it is in the pattern. So for the wreath, I have it as two chain stitches, uh, two rows of chain stitch, so an outer circle and an inner circle, some French knots in the middle there, and some little lines going across. Uh, so it's nice and, and thick and hefty there. Whereas the, uh, um, the stocking and the reindeer, they're just all like back stitches, so they're just all line work. And I think uh, you can use, you know, fatter floss so more more strands or you could use less strands if you want it more delicate i believe we did this with three strands although maybe it's just two this might be just two strands uh to get thinner lines i think let's use two strands tonight we'll make this a little more delicate so i'm going to use scraps uh the bundle does come with floss for this but i always kind of like digging through my scrap pile uh, and seeing what I got. I'll probably use probably pretty similar stuff. 
So let's just kind of, ooh, I'm all tangled here. Ooh, we got some hidden <laughs> ball winders, pom-pom winders in there too. Oh my goodness, this green is tangled in everything, isn't it? Let's get it out. So I think this is a really pretty green. Actually, it with yellow is pretty. Well, why don't we just do these? So that's this will be pretty similar to the wreath. I think we're using a little bit different green. But why don't we do the green for the wreath, this little yellow for the dots, and maybe we use some of the yellow in other places. Uh, I think the reindeer, I did see some tan in here. Why don't we make him tan? Well, I have some tan and brown. Let's just get both of those out. And we can do fun, silly colors too. Like, okay, this winter morning is awfully cute. We could do, you know, his, in, in here his antlers are green. So that kind of goes with the green of the wreath. So we can play around, but let's just, let's start at the wreath just because that's what's on my brain right now. And I do want to do those two rows of chain stitches because I think that'll just be really fun if I find an end to my scrappy yarn here. So this is all floss from other projects, and instead of winding it on bobbins, I just throw it in my bin here. I do actually have a lot of wound bobbins worth. Oh, let's do that double up way of doing this as well. Um, so I'm going to get a longer piece. So I have a feeling we're going to use hardly any, hardly any floss on this project at all, especially if we only use two strands. So I'm, I'm just going to actually pull one strand out of here and we're going to do that, that two strand method, but we're doing it by folding the one strand in half. And for funsies, let's get my, um, thread conditioner out here. This is that one that I think smells like Christmas. So let's just add to the holidays. I can't believe it's that far into the year already. <laughs> kind of crazy. Okay. So I need to get both of these ends together and I need a needle. So I keep a couple needles in my in my floss bin here, so I'm just gonna grab grab one. All right, here we go. So I have the two ends on this side, and the loop is on on this side. So I'm gonna do a reverse chain stitch because this doesn't the loop method doesn't actually work very well with a um, a normal chain stitch. You the loop method, you don't want to go in and out of the same hole for your first stitch and you know, like you normally would with a chain stitch. So we're going to do a reverse chain stitch where we um, make a little baby stitch first. So I'm just starting somewhere. <laughs> Didn't have any real rhyme or reason for starting here, but I'm going to make that little anchor stitch. So I'll just pull it through a little bit, but I am going to, I have the loop here. I'm going to actually thread my needle through that loop and it's going to make basically a little knot. It's not even actually going to make a knot. It's just a loop holding down thread. So that's how we're starting this. So there is no loose threads or anything. It's pretty crazy. So this, this, the, the um, two strand method where you just fold one strand in half is pretty awesome to start out with. So, all right, let's do our reverse chain stitch. So we got our little baby stitch in there. I'm going to come up at the start of the next stitch and I'm going to thread my needle through that first little baby anchor stitch, pull it tight again, and then we will go back in our starter hole. So that is our first, first chain stitch there. Awesome, so let's just keep going around, cruising around here, and then we'll jump and do that inner one. So you could even, I mean, like, if you did this wreath in, like, a blue, that would be really pretty and Christmassy. You could do, like, a like a bright blue and then, like, that crystally winter morning blue for the 
little berries in it. That would be kind of fun. Oh, Kathleen. So Kathleen's asking if I have the kitty pattern, the bundle as a PDF. I don't. We kind of did that project differently than we normally do. And I, I guess at the time I didn't think about doing it as a bundle. I'll, I'll look into that a little bit more and um, see if I can make it available as a PDF. I'll see. Uh, I'll, I'll check that out tonight. But yeah, right now it's just that bundle and the bundle is just the, um, that, that bag, like a, it's a drawstring, like muslin bag. I think two strands is perfect for this little project, these little icons, and still have it feel kind of hefty and embroidery. I don't know, like playful, big embroidery still, because they're so little, the thread seems big. But you could do one strand, and maybe we'll do that tomorrow. I could actually, we could actually satin stitch this guy in, or short and long stitch. We could color these whole things in. Uh, Especially since they're so little, that would be easy to do. So tonight we'll just play by the rules here a little bit. Um, not really the rules, but by what was in, in the guide. And I don't actually have that near me tonight. Tomorrow I'll, I'll uh, get my file open, the PDF for this, so we can look at the stitches and stuff. Uh, but tomorrow... Or whenever we start the gift tags, when, when we have this project done, so this might be two days, but when we start the next little icon project, why don't we try filling in the whole thing? So kind of like what we did with the peach for the Your Sweet embroidery of the month earlier this year. Maybe not that intricate, but kind of filling in, filling in the shape. This is the perfect size for that. So we're getting there around this first one. My needle's catching a little bit on the stick and stitch. This is looking pretty cute. All right, so Noeline wants wants it as a PDF too. I'll, I'll look into it and see see what we got there. Ooh, that would be cute. Amy says uh, seed beads as like the little um, circles here on the wreath would be really cute. They would. Okay, I really love that idea. I could just stitch these little wreaths all day long, I think. Imagine, oh my god, okay, so this would be cute. Just the same wreath pattern, like a bunch of times on, on a page or on a fabric, but you stitch each one differently. Like they could each be a different color, or, you know, oops, I have a knot. One could be chain stitches and one could be something else. And, um, you know, one could have the beads in. Oh, it'd be fun. Just a whole, oh my gosh, this really is a knot. It's not even popping out at this level. Huh, I must have um, stabbed it as I was going in. Ugh, this might be annoying. All right, it looks like I can force it through for a little bit. Sometimes when I'm pulling the thread through, I accidentally stab through the, you know, like I'll, I'll stab through the middle without knowing it, and that can ca cause a knot sometime, sometimes, and I think that's what I did here. Ooh, and then I made this stitch really tight. Let's loosen that up. But yeah, just like a pattern of embroidered wreaths would be fun, 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 fun. Trying to glance up at your comments a little bit better, a little bit more tonight. Uh, I'm not cutting or sewing, so it makes it a little bit easier. I'm really excited for the the birds on 
on that shirt collar. I'll show that again too if, if anyone came late. I'm gonna stitch the two little birds, the uh, cardinal and the black cap chickadee, onto the collar of uh, this button-up shirt. Oops, shoot, lost my thread here. And it's a shirt that I don't wear very often because I'm kind of meh about it, but with the little guys on the collars, I think I'll wear it a whole lot more. I think it, it's actually, it's a shirt that I should probably just, I think it would be cute like under a sweater and I haven't been doing that. So I think if I start wearing it like under a sweater where it can just pop out the little collar, I think, I think then I'll like it again. It hasn't been that cold yet though, if you can believe it. Um, it's been just beautiful. Oh, you guys, I had, we were at the warehouse today and okay, it's mid December. We had the, uh, in Minnesota, we had the, the back garage door open to the warehouse. So we had sunlight and warmth from the sun, all of it. Um, today, it was crazy. All right, you guys, I, I'm going to actually start a new piece of thread because that knot's going to annoy me. And I don't think I can make it all the way around with the amount of thread that I have. So I'm just going to, I'm going to just weave in this end. We're going to just start the next row of the wreath fresh. I just don't want to, um, don't want to stop my chain stitch in the middle because I ran out of thread. Yeah, I definitely don't have enough thread. Right there, got my needle minder. <laughs> All right, so let's get another one of those strands that we cut earlier and we'll double it up. So we've only used one strand from this so far. So like this is gonna go a long ways. Ugh. Oh yeah, so I do sell, I'm just, I didn't catch the beginning of this conversation, but I do have the stick and stitch. That's these stickers that I printed on. Uh, that's that's these things. I do have the stick and stitch on my um, on on the website on penguinandfish.com. It's under the supplies section, so it's called Stick and Stitch by Sulky, and it, it comes in eight and a half by eleven sheets, which is the size that runs through a printer in the U.S. Um, and you can run it through a laser printer or an inkjet printer. Uh, the ones in the bundles and the ones that I'm using is through an, through a laser printer because that's that's what I have here. Um, but it does work on an inkjet as well. What I love about it is that I don't have to spend time transferring the design and the transfer. Uh, I don't don't have to spend time with it because it just sticks on, right? Uh, and I don't and the transfer is like a direct version of the pattern. It's not like my one generation lost from, from, uh, drawing it on after. I just realized that I didn't do this right. I, I, uh, doubled up the thread up here, but what I want to do is fold it in half so that the loop is on the bottom and thread it up here where the two ends meet. So I'm re-threading. But yeah, so there's a little extra step when you're done, which is taking off the stick and stitch. So you do that with water and we've demonstrated that here quite a bit and I'll do it again for, for these projects. Uh, so actually that probably might mean tomorrow or Friday we'll be taking the stick and stitch off of this. So we'll demo that this week yet. So that's a little extra step, but to me that outweighs the having to trace it. Because that just, I don't always like doing that. I just want to get to stitching. Okay, I'm going to start this again. We'll start with our little anchor stitch. So I'm doing that inside circle. This is actually pretty. It's just like one, one um, row around. I actually kind of really like that. But we're going to add that extra row. Just a nice little circle like that. I mean, it immediately says wreath. 
Okay, so I'm making that tiny stitch. We're doing the reverse chain stitch again. All right, let's pull that through. I'm gonna pull this a little tighter. So there's our loop. So I'm gonna go through that loop. And when I pull tight, that loop is just gonna secure, get secured there, and I don't have to weave in any ends, nothing. So you can only really do this with an even amount of threads. Uh, that's why I'm using the two strands. That and that the two strand gives you know, like a really delicate kind of look, which looks good with these itty bitty icons here. But what a easy, fast, fun way to start. All right, I'm gonna go through my little anchor stitch here. If I quite got it. There we go. Oh yeah, the stick and stitch is amazing. It, it really is nice. And you can actually draw with pencil and stuff on it. So like all these extra little bits, you can draw on it. Or, you know, what I could have done is I could have taken my 2020 that I had here. And especially if I was, like if I was stitching this on a dark fabric, for example, that's where stick and stitch can come in great. So I would not have been able to trace this 2020 through a dark fabric because I wouldn't have been able to see through it. However, I could trace it onto my stick and stitch with a pencil or a pen or something. Then I could cut that out and I could have stick, stuck that on like a sticker as well. So if you have a, like a super patterned fabric, so like if this head was just so patterny that it was hard to trace through, um, this would have been great. Or if this is, um, if you stuck this onto a dark fabric and actually if you stick it onto a weird fabric too, like felt, for example, this would be great with felt as long as you're okay with getting the felt wet afterwards. Or like, like the shirt that I'm going to be stitching on, like that would be because it's patterned and it's a couple layers that would be pretty difficult to to um, to trace through. So again, stick and stitch comes through for that. Um, where you don't want to do stick and stitch is something that you don't want to get wet. Uh, so you wouldn't do this on like, I don't know, silk or something. Or like a linen that you didn't want to get wet at all. Um, so you can always, always test it how it comes out. And if you haven't tested it with your own printer yet if you're not sure that you know I don't know whatever inkjet printer or whatever that you have you could print out a little piece and stick it on a piece of fabric and see how it comes off like if all the ink comes out and all that so you could you could give it a test beforehand if you're nervous about that Ugh, this is looking cute this will definitely be the most intricate of the designs that we put down here. Okay, that this looks like it says joy in a really like subtle way was really serendipitous. That was really kind of fun. That was not the plan. So I'm really excited that that happened. Oh, dang. Libby says 54 tomorrow in northern Indiana. I think that's what it's going to be like here, too. We we were in the 50s today. I, it's crazy. Oh, but so freaking beautiful. Like I said, we had the door wide open. I mean, you know, it's chilly. It ain't 70. <laughs> but uh, it just, you know what it made it feel? It made it feel like winter was over and it was starting to be spring again. That's a good feeling. <laughs> Ugh, but we're gonna do that as long as we can. I think it's supposed to be like that here tomorrow too, Libby. Crazy town. This is looking pretty dang cute and I'm liking the idea more and more of just a whole sheet of these wreaths and then you stitch them all differently. Ooh, imagine oh, this would be fancy. Uh, a fancy stocking, but imagine like a like a linen stocking or something, like a nice cream linen 
that's really pretty. Maybe there's some white, like white and cream linen together. How about that? And then you just have teeny tiny little wreaths like this all over it, stitched all over. That would be a fancy and really pretty stocking. All right, last stitch for the green here. Okay, that's looking pretty dang cute. All right, I'm gonna weave that in. And... Oh yeah, I know. I Marie says, yes, nice here in uh, Wisconsin too. Uh, right here too, but I'm worried for when the, the cold and the snow hits. Yeah, exactly. How, how, and like how bad it's gonna potentially get. Yep, because it can just, it can just be here <laughs> and be crazy, that's for sure. But yeah, I just, um, I ordered some new boots and they just came in the mail uh, yesterday, so I'm, I'm excited to give them a go. I had uh, a pair of winter boots and a pair of hiking boots and both leak at this point. Like they both let moisture in or like water in or snow in. So I'm like, yeah, that's not going to work. I might try and repair the hiking boots somehow. I don't quite know how I would do that. But so this this one pair of boots is supposed to replace those two other boots. That's that's my plan. Because I'm still doing the like one in and two out uh, idea. I'm going to do the... Let's do... Let's do the ribbon. I didn't pick a ribbon yet ribbon color. Let's just do the red. Let's just have this be nice and traditional. Oh, I probably need more red than this. Yeah, because I'm going to do the double. I'm going to do the double, double it up thread method. Here's some more. But yeah, I don't have, I don't have snow and cold to test out my, my uh, boots quite yet. Well, that's fine. They can wait a little bit longer. I'm fine with that. Oh, you have a high, Sylvia has a high of 37 tomorrow. But the Midwest gets colder and more snow than here. Oh, where, where are you, Sylvia? Yeah, right now we're, we're looking pretty dang good in the Midwest, but yep, it can get horribly, horribly cold here. That's for sure. So the fact that we haven't had that yet, we had that one kind of big, snow right at the beginning I and I posted that picture in the Facebook page where we had just like a blast of like here's eight inches of snow for the snow first snowfall and uh, you know here you go <laughs> now drive home uh we got that but then that went away and we really haven't had anything you know to talk about since then Ugh, except for gorgeous gorgeous sunny warm mild weather and ugh, I'll take it. Just the sun. The sun hasn't been out for the past few days, so just, just it being sunny today was awesome. And sun with heat coming out of it yet. Oh, you're the south, southeast Alaska on the coast, so cooler there, but man, so you don't get, oh, you're on the coast, so maybe you don't get that like super blistering cold. Ooh, dang. Christy says it's 75. Beautiful and 70 by her. Whew, that sounds real good. <laughs> that sounds amazing. All right, so it's a little hard to see where to stitch now since we've kind of covered it all up. So just you can look at the guide, the um, PDF. Uh, I'm just going to kind of kind of dig around in here. And I also have, I don't have my computer open or my my file open, but I also have this kind of example here. So we're going to start with, uh, it has two little lazy daisy stitches right here. I'm going to come up right in the middle of these. Oh, you know what? I think I'm going to stitch these lines first. 
the bottom of the bow because I can't, I gotta make that loop in the back, right? I can't start with a lazy daisy stitch because a lazy daisy stitch c comes up and down in the same hole. And if you do that, the loop method doesn't work. But I can start with a back stitch. So let's loop through the loop. Put the needle through the loop. We'll pull that tight. There we go. First little back stitch. I'm making the bottom of the ribbon here. Ooh, this red just pops against this green. That's fun. I think I'm using more of that lime peel green here, whereas in the bundle I used the celery green, which is a little paler. So I think they both look kind of nice. And again, I think a blue would look really pretty for this. All right, there we go. Now let's do the lazy daisy stitches for the bow. So I'm gonna do a very lazy daisy, meaning I'm not gonna pull it tight. I'm gonna let it just be, let it just be kind of big. And it looks like it goes about right here. Oh, except for the strands kind of pulled at a different rate. There we go. That kind of is cute. All right, let's tack it down. It's looking awfully sweet. All right, let's do the other side. And we'll do a little French knot in the middle of there. Probably don't actually need the French knot, but I think it'd look cute with it. It's cute. Little bitty bitty. I, I'm, I'm, the stitching this small, it's growing on me for sure. Like all these just tiny, tiny, tiny little, little designs. It's pretty fun. It feels like you get a lot done right away. All right, I'm gonna do a little French knot right in the middle here. Gosh, it's cute just like that without anything else around it. Like I said, keep doing a whole thing of different, different wreaths would be really cute. Gosh, I'm tempted to just leave it like this, but we'll... Gosh, it is cute just like that, isn't it? <laughs> I think, why don't we, um, we'll, we'll keep going with it though. We'll do the rest of it. So, I can kind of see where the French knots go, and we have these little ribbons that kind of go around it. So, let's do that. It is really cute, though. Just as is. But we'll go around and around. So after this, we will switch to the yellow. I'm gonna try and finish up at least this this um, wreath tonight. So we'll do the yellow French knots yet. And then tomorrow, I think we should, I don't know, be awfully close to finishing the rest of this, I would think. And then Friday, yeah, okay, so this is, I think this is the plan. Tomorrow we will finish this off. If we have a few stitches to do yet on Friday, that's fine. Friday, we will take off the stick and stitch. So we'll take, we'll dip this in water and then press it. Um, we'll do that. And then also on Friday, we will wrap this hoop. Um, I'll see if I'll, maybe I'll do a different colored fabric, but I might just wrap it in the same fabric as this. Maybe I'll have a, like a really raw edge to it. I think that'd be kind of pretty. Uh, so we'll wrap the hoop just cause it gives a little extra 
decoration to it. I'll also show you like how I like finishing the hoop, finishing the fabric behind the hoop. Uh, so we'll, we'll do all the little finishing things on Friday for this. And then we'll, next week, we will move on to the couple other projects that we want to do, like the collar and the gift tags. Tempted to do the collar first. Maybe we'll do the collar next. All right, that looks cute too. <laughs> I thought it was kind of nice with just the, um, just the bow, but I do like that around it now. Oh, are you looking for, um, Sylvia, are you looking for the, why, for, for this? This is by Wisecraft, so you can do a search for, you don't have to do a search. Here's the address right here. It's Wisecraft Handmade. I don't know if you guys can read that. So Wisecraft Handmade, all one word, dot com. And then it'll be in the, um, thread conditioner section. Either supplies or the thread conditioner section. I think conditioner section? I don't know. Once you get there, I th it'll make sense in the shop area. But yeah, and the one that smells like Christmas to me, that's what uh, this one in particular is called Rainfall. And there's three different flavors. I'll definitely have to use this red for the... Um, Rudolph knows for sure. We could satin stitch that in. That'd be cute. All right. Oh, you can go on the needle minder. All right, let's get these little uh, yellow um, feathers done. So I'm thinking with this two, with this loop method, with the two strands, it's best if you just keep stitching with the one, with the thread that you're using. Because if you snip it, then you're left with like two pieces and, and no loop. <laughs> so I suppose I don't need a very long piece if all I'm going to do is these French knots. So I don't need to get too big of a piece. Although if I want to use it later, ugh, let's just cut a normal size piece. I'm thinking too much. So these yellow, this yellow is going to be those little, um, those little baubles in the middle of, of the wreath here. We'll do that quick tonight and uh, call it an evening, but I'm really liking this so far. This is definitely going to be our 2020 ornament. We don't have one yet or anything. Oops, that's getting a little loopy. I mean, if anything, it's just a pleasure to smell these <laughs> while I'm working. It's, it's like having a candle lit right next to you that smells nice. Besides, you know, making the thread a little easier to work with. Okay, so I'm just thinking, how am I going to do the loop knot with a French knot? But guess what? I'm going to skip it all together. I'm going to just go around some of these back stitches here. Let's just go around a whole bunch of these. And instead of doing the, the loop method as I start my stitch, I'm just going to go underneath these other stitches and secure it. So before I even start stitching, so there we go. I'm ready to go now, um, even without doing a stitch yet. Just going under the ones that are there already. Hehe. <laughs> All right. So in the middle of each one of these is a little French knot. This is looking cute. I'm really excited about these itty bitty guys. Ugh, there we go. So fun. Sally, I don't have any icons for Valentine's Day or Easter. This is the first time I've done little itty bitty icons like this, but man, I'd love the idea of some Valentine's Day ones. That's coming up real soon. 
maybe we do that for the February embroidery of the month. That'd be kind of fun. But yeah, they're so versatile because you could stitch the whole thing, like what what our samples are. Uh, but yeah, I love that you can just put them on little things. You know, especially for Valentine's Day, if you're giving like little itty bitty gifts, just a little embroidery. I mean, you could make a card out of these, like a fabric card or like glue the finished design onto paper or something. That would be really cute. I do like the idea of other holidays as little icons. Ooh, that's not a great French knot. Oh, there we go. All right, two more, and uh, our little wreath is done. We kind of started with the most involved embroidery between the three of these. Getting it out of the way. All right, and the one more. Ugh. It's so cute. So little. I would say this is sm about the size of a penny, maybe a little bit smaller. Bigger than a dime, smaller than a penny. <laughs> Alright, let's weave in the ends. And of course, feel free to enlarge these. I don't know if you want to shrink them any smaller. That'd be pretty difficult, but feel free to enlarge or shrink these to whatever size you want um, with the PDF. These would be just fine larger too. And feel free to play around with different stitches. Just use them as, use this as a guide. God, I can't grab it. There we go. Snip. Cute. We have a great start here. Ooh, a small pouch with the small icons would be cute. Uh, Sally saying, yes, I love that idea. Ugh, just small little guys on everything. Okay, look how fun that wreath is. Ugh, neat. All right, so like I said, tomorrow I'm hoping we can finish the rest of this. I mean, the rest is basically, if we do it like how the design is currently, the rest is basically a bunch of back stitches. That should be quick and easy. Um, awesome, yeah. So we will finish the embroidery tomorrow in theory, and then Friday we'll take off the stick and stitch and the water-soluble marker. We will decorate our hoop and we will finish off the back real nice. So we'll have a finished, we'll have a finished piece uh, by Friday, a, a finished ornament. That'll be nice. And then, uh, oh yeah, here again is the, uh, we put the little cardinal stick and stitch and the little chickadee on my shirt there. I don't know if you guys can see, there we go, real close on the collars there. So these are going to just be like the itty bittiest little embroideries on my shirt here. I'm pretty excited about that. We might do that next, um, after after um this and actually you know what would be cute just you could stitch like a little heart on um maybe this would be one of the icons for valentine's day you could do a little heart on the sleeve or you know even further up just like little hidden hearts on stitched on a sleeve somewhere would be just freaking adorable uh but anyway now I want to stitch on more clothes. So we'll do this uh, next week. This will probably be Monday uh, because we'll still be probably working on this through Friday. So we'll do this. I don't think that'll take long. And then I still want to make gift tags as well. At least one gift tag. So we'll pick another icon out of here. We'll stitch it. And then we'll do like a little to and a from and make, um, maybe um, stitch it onto felt, put a little ribbon on. I don't know, we'll play around with making gift tags as well with some little icons. So three fun little projects uh, this week and uh, next week. All right, so that was so fun. I am just 
excited how this turned out. I'm excited that it says joy now. <laughs> that was on accident. Uh, yeah, I'm feeling good. This is a good way to end 2020 with my 2020 ornament here. Uh, it'll be cute. We'll put a little string on it. Uh, maybe I'll find some cute ribbon for it as well. Yeah, I'm feeling good about it. So yeah, it'll be fun to finish that up tomorrow, the embroidery for that. So thanks for joining me for this stitch along. Uh, it's been fun today so far for me, all these little, little baby icons. Uh, yeah, they're so versatile. So feel free to share in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group on Facebook. I'd love to see what you're making out of these guys. Uh, yeah, share away. So thanks again. I will see you tomorrow. We'll keep continuing on this. Have a great evening. Good night.